We're now going to have George Washington read the Declaration of Independence. Greetings, fellow patriots. I want to say that when the original Declaration was read, I gave an order for the Army to appear on the parade grounds, which, like we are doing here, and I said, the general hopes and trust that every officer and man will endeavor so to live and act as becomes a Christian soldier, defending the dearest rights and liberties of our country. And that's what we're here today to do. Declaration of We the People. Independence Day, November 19th, in the year of our Lord, 2013. Reclaim America Now Coalition. Pending an acceptable outcome of the vitally important 2004 election, which affords the opportunity to elect a Congress that is willing to initiate impeachment proceedings against Barack Hussein Obama, and thereby stop, yes, and even remove from office this fraudulent usurper and his inner circle of collaborators. We, the people of the United States of America, declare our allegiance in the meantime to the timeless principles upon which our nation was founded as set forth in the original Declaration of Independence, and hereby serve notice our intent to apply these principles to the extent doing so make it become necessary to preserve our God-given rights and liberties, previously protected by our now virtually non-existent Constitution. To wit, when, in the course of human events, it becomes necessary for one people to dissolve the political bands which have connected them with another and to assume among the powers of the earth the separate and equal station to which the laws of nature and of nature's God entitle them. A decent respect to the opinions of mankind requires that they should declare the causes which impel them to the separation. We hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are created equal, that they are endowed by their Creator with certain unalienable rights, that among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, that to secure these rights, governments are instituted among men deriving their just powers from consent of the governed, that whenever any form of government becomes destructive to these ends, it is the right of the people to alter or to abolish it, and to institute new government, laying its foundation on such principles and organizing its powers in such form as to them shall seem most likely to affect their safety and happiness. Prudence, indeed, will dictate that governments long established should not be changed for light and transient causes. And accordingly, all experience hath shown that mankind are more disposed to suffer while evils are sufferable than to right themselves by abolishing the forms to which they are accustomed. But when a long train of abuses and usurpations pursuing invariably the same object evinces a design to reduce them to under absolute despotism, it is their right, it is their duty to throw off such government and to provide new guards for their future security. Such has been the patient sufferance of these states. And such is now the necessity which constrains them to alter their former systems of government. The history of the current peer resident of the United States of America, Barack Hussein Obama, is a history of repeated 
injuries and usurpations, all having in direct object the establishment of an absolute tyranny over these states. To prove this, let facts be submitted to a candid world, along with demands that require resolution. Mr. Obama has engaged through his despotic tenure as president in rule by edict and executive decree, bypassing Congress and thus the will of the people to enforce policies entirely of his own creation, ignoring the federal government's foundation of separation of powers. He has denigrated duly enacted statutes and laws of the legislature, as well as manipulated or ignored the courts in clear pursuit of total or near total supremacy over the United States of America. And in so doing, he has exhibited an unmistakable pattern of contempt for this United States Constitution, which prior to his tenure had long served without dispute as the law of the land. We therefore demand that this criminal, treasonous individual be removed from office without delay and held accountable and held accountable for his destructive behavior, and that all his acts as president be considered of no effect or validity. The second, Mr. Obama has attained the office of president in a verifiably fraudulent and criminal manner, and upon a false identity and false pretenses. We therefore demand immediate release of all currently sealed documentation of who this man is, what his true history entails, and what his earlier school, travel, and other records reveal about him, and what his original, not photocopied, birth certificate makes clear, and all other relevant information in the public record now suppressed or intentionally falsified regarding this man. We, the people of the United States, have a right to know such things about a man who currently serves as our Commander-in-Chief of our nation's armed forces and oversees the entire executive branch of our United States government. The third Upon taking office, Mr. Obama criminally defrauded Congress and the American people with false promises uttered repeatedly in the public record about the nature, scope, and effect of his signature legislative achievement, Obamascare, in a deceptive effort to gain passage of this catastrophic measure, which authorizes a sweeping federal takeover of America's health care industry. We therefore demand that this health care travesty be immediately revoked, defunded, and declared null and void, and that this president be held accountable for intentionally misleading and defrauding the citizenry by means of his, this insidious scheme, a scheme that has already diminished the rightful choice of most Americans regarding their health care, has caused millions to lose their jobs due to its workplace requirements, and will cost our nation its material viability and vitality if allowed to go forward. Yeah. Article the fourth. In a deliberate scheme to force the financial collapse of the United States of America, Mr. Obama and his collaborators have pushed the nation's public debt, that is the difference between public spending and public receipts, to an unsustainable 
trillion dollars. An amount exceeding our gross net domestic product or total value of goods and services and more than doubling the debt's previous rate of growth. The effect is to impose an indebtedness of over $50,000 upon every man, woman, and child in the United States and more than $150,000 per taxpayer, numbers that indicate the U.S. is headed toward insolvency and our posterity will be forced to bear the dire consequences. The effect is even more dire when unfunded liabilities are factored in. We, therefore, demand that the individual behind this destructive scheme assume all liability upon his own person and heirs for the amount the national debt has increased during his tenure in company with all others who have collaborated with him in the executive and legislative branches of our federal government in enacting this policy, listing them by name, and that the American people at large be absolved in writing of any and all liability for such wanton abuse of the public purse. What? Okay. Right. Article the fifth. By insidious design and outright treachery, Mr. Obama has dangerously weakened America's national security through his emasculation of our military by adopting policies his unilateral reduction of our missile defense system, thereby weakening American military superiority and inviting nuclear conflagration at home and abroad. His deceitful promotion and arming of radical Islamic interests in Egypt, Libya, Syria, and elsewhere. His catering in domestic and foreign policy to the Muslim Brotherhood which is on record seeking the destruction of the United States. His fraudulent relations with Iran that will likely ensure this radically hostile nation succeeds in developing nuclear weapons. His continuing disregard for all the vital interests of longtime ally Israel. His unreasonable handicapping of our military's rules of engagement dangerously favoring America's enemies, his alarming pattern of m dismissing high-ranking military officers for groundless and superficial reasons, and similar anti-American policies and actions too numerous to mention. We, therefore, demand that the Obama administration immediately cease and desist from its treasonous unconstitutional conspiratorial plot to take down America and our allies with it and that a sane pro-America policy be adopted in its place for the purpose of protecting our nation from all threats to its continuance. Article the sixth. Mr. Obama has deceitfully sought to cover up his administration's involvement in a covert operation in Benghazi, Libya yeah. that ran afoul on September 11, 2012. The President's fabricated narrative of the causes and nature of the episode, which resulted in the death of Ambassador Christopher Stevens and three other Americans has been shown to be a cynical attempt to divert attention from what actually happened, including reports of treasonable administrative dealings with terrorist insurgents in Syria. The administration's interference with investigations by Congress into the matter and muzzling of witnesses and participants offers hints that only the tip of the iceberg has yet been revealed regarding Mr. Obama's contemptuous behavior in the matter. We, therefore, demand 
that all witnesses who have first-hand knowledge of the truth regarding the Benghazi treasonous fiasco be permitted to come forth without threat of retaliation and give their account of any and all relevant facts, including mounting up their constitutionally guaranteed right to keep and bear arms in a direct assault on the Second Amendment by someone who himself possesses a growing threat to the security and well-being of our nation. And he has repeatedly made known his intention to succeed with his unconstitutional goal of disarming the people despite any setbacks he may encounter in Congress. We therefore demand that the President immediately step down from his usurped office and seek refuge in a nation more to his liking, one that already bans or severely restricts gun ownership by law-abiding citizens in consequence of despotic notions of governance. Article the Eighth. Similarly, Mr. Obama has repeatedly sought to undermine U.S. border security and, by extension, America's very independence by pushing misnamed immigration reform that would in reality open wide our borders, overburden our public coffers, and grant amnesty to the many millions of unlawful occupiers who have entered the country by stealth in defiance of U.S. immigration statutes and who therefore have shown little allegiance to the American rule of law. Ostensibly, the President intends, by his abandoning of long-standing U.S. immigration policy, to create a lifestyle a lifestyle on moral grounds saying they are motivated by hatred and he has included stipulations in his health care plan that would force Americans who oppose abortion or anything related involving abortifacients or contraceptives to directly fund such practices, unconstitutionally violating their religious rights and undermining the moral foundations of Judeo-Christianity. Such efforts are part of the President's sweeping plan to transform American society and make citizens more docilely controllable. We therefore demand that biblical morality be allowed once again the place of respect it has long enjoyed at the center of our nation's culture. On its own merits, without federal interference of any kind that would violate the First Amendment, we also call for immediately ending the moral and material travesty known as Obamascare, including any requirement that American citizens or businesses personally underwrite aborticide. In every stage of these and other oppressions that could be cited, we have petitioned for redress in the most humble terms. Our repeated petitions have been answered only by repeated injury and blatant lies. A fraudulent prince whose character is thus marked by every act which may define a tyrant is unfit to be the ruler of a free people. Nor have we been f wanting in attentions to the president's supportive constituency. We have warned them from time to time of attempts by their collaborators in the legislature to extend an unwarrantable jurisdiction over us. We have reminded them of the circumstances of our own and our forebears' immigration and settlement here. We have appealed to their native justice and magnanimity, and we have conjured them by the ties of our common kindred to disavow these usurpations, which would inevitably interrupt our connections 
and correspondence. They too have been deaf to the voice of justice and of consanguinity. We must therefore acquiesce in the necessity which denounces our separation and hold them as we hold the rest of mankind, enemies in war and in peace friends. We, the people, therefore appealing to the supreme judge of the world for the rectitude of our intentions do in the name and by the authority of the good people of the estates solemnly publish and declare that henceforth unless we receive redress for our grievances in harmony with the principles of the original declaration these united states are and of right ought to be free and independent states free from the dictatorial tyranny of Barack Hussein Obama or Barry Satoro and the compromised and corrupt acts and judgments of his enablers in the Congress and the federal courts that these states are abolished from all allegiance to the Obama administration's regime and that all political connection between them and the Obama administration is and ought to be totally dissolved until such time as the aforementioned Constitution and its explicit provisions may be reinstated in place of that connection by the people through their lawful representatives. And recognized once again as the undisputed law of the land of this United States of America, until which time we, the people, have full power to levy war, conclude peace, contract alliances, establish commerce, and do all other acts and things which independent states may of right do. And for the support of this declaration, with a firm reliance on the protection of divine providence, we, the people, mutually pledge to each other our lives, our fortunes, and our sacred honor to save our beloved nation and preserve the freedoms bequeathed to us by our founders. And finally, on July 3rd in the year of our Lord, 1776, before this the original declaration was signed, the birth certificate of our nation, I, General Washington, gave this order, the fate of unborn millions will now depend under God on the conduct and courage of this army. Here at this plaza overlooking our White House is the advance guard of this army to reclaim liberty in America. God bless you and may America bless God. Thank you, Mr. Washington. And as one of our other great founding fathers said, Benjamin Franklin, either we all hang together or separately we will hang. That's right. And after this Thanksgiving Day, which will be next week, this President, Barack Hussein Obama, has until the next day to meet our demands or the second American Revolution will begin. Yeah.